Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. I want to bring out a beautiful scripture. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 146, verse 2, which says, While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. The psalmist's desire to lift up the Lord in, in praise throughout his whole life while he still has breath. He says, I will praise, I will sing. This is a determined prayer, and it is in present tense. I will do it now. No matter what I face, I will praise the Lord. No matter what's going on, I will sing praises to my God. Praise is more powerful than we can even imagine. Praise stirs up our spirit. Praise ascends to God's throne as an offering. Praise erects a shield to combat defeat and depression. Praise overcomes grumblings in our spirit. God is worthy of praise, and he loves to hear our praise and smell that sweet fragrance offering. The idea is not merely that the psalmist would praise him during his life, this short and fleeting life that's like a vapor, but that as long as he has an existence in this life, in the future to come, forever he would praise the Lord. The psalmist had a good reason to praise the Lord since he had his life given from the Lord. And the Lord upheld him. And the Lord favored him with mercy and comforts of this life. And every day he's being renewed. Every morning and continuing all the day of his life. The Lord is continuing every day to renew us. Every morning and continuing all the days of our life. The Lord is renewing us. He's meeting every need that we have. So we have this desire to worship him. Which is determined throughout our whole life. To praise the Lord is to have a spiritual life from the Lord with all the blessings of the spiritual life that we grow in the Lord, which is lasting and has the hope of everlasting life of the Lord. Where it says, I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being, not only in this world, but in the world to come. For we will have an existence after death. And if you look at this part of the verse in Strong's Hebrew, where it says, while I have my being, is translated from one Hebrew word, which means continuance, repeatedly. So we will be singing praises to our king forever. It is our duty towards God to be always praising him, if not with our lips, then from our hearts. We should not just praise God in song at church. But our praise to God should fill up our whole life. With praise to God as life continues, so should our praise to our God continue. You see, the Lord has forgiven us who have called on the name of the Lord, who put our faith and trust in Jesus. He's forgiven us so much. So we have so much to praise him for. Because not only have we been forgiven of our sins and granted eternal life, but when we're going through anything in this life, all the ups and downs of life, oppression, addiction, depression, sickness, disease, whatever it may be that you're facing, when you turn to the Lord, you seek his face and you seek him to help you through it, and then you come out the other side, you've got reason to praise. And even if you're down in that, and you still haven't been on the other side yet, you're still down in that valley, and you're still trusting the Lord, just continue to praise him. Lord, I thank you that you're bringing me through. We all, whether we're saved or not, have ups and downs in life. But the thing is, is when we have Jesus in our life, then we have someone, a companion, while we're having those lows of life. We have a companion that's going to help us through. That's why we can sing praises continually while we have breath in our body. And after we are long gone, we will still be praising our King continually. So if you don't know Jesus today, I don't think that you're here by accident. I think the Lord sent you here for a reason. 
And I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. You may not actually know who Jesus is. You may know what he did on the cross. But you don't know him personally. You've never taken the time to talk to him, to get to know him, to pray, to read the Bible. But I want to introduce you to just who Jesus is. And show you that what he did on the cross, what that means for you. So the gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. Sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. Romans 3.23 confirms this, saying that all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, meaning because of our sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for sin, and because of our sin, we all deserve punishment. We are all destined to destruction. But there's mercy of God in John 3.16, that God loves you so much. That God, the Son, Jesus, left heaven, became a flesh and blood human, fully God, fully man. Lived a perfect, sinless life, but on the cross he put our sins on himself. Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took the punishment that we deserve in our place. And when we believe the gospel message and are saved, then we put on Jesus' righteousness. Because we, like a garment, are stained with sin. But when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, then you're washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus, washed white as snow. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died for our sins and was buried and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to scriptures. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. The end of John 3, 16 says, Whosoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Romans 10, 13 says it like this, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Jesus makes it clear in John 14, 6, He is the only way to get to heaven. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else can save you. A preacher will not be able to save you. Your mom and dad, they can't save you. Even your works and your deeds, they won't be able to save you. Salvation cannot be found anywhere else and in anyone else. Salvation can only be obtained through Jesus Christ. Because his blood is our ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what paid our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down that wall that separates us from God. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words to try to please someone, you're not looking for a get out of hell free card, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it. Because we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. When you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity. It won't matter that you think that you've been good enough, that you never robbed or killed anybody, because our works, our deeds, they're not good enough to get us into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, It's by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is receiving something we didn't earn, meaning we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't even deserve to go to heaven, but God loves us and made a way for us. He gave us something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, something we could never obtain by ourselves. And we always follow the gospel, the warning of Jesus is in return. Because right now you can personally know who Jesus is, but one day soon and how soon we don't know. But complete hell and earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts it. The shadow of the tribulation is so big right now, we can barely see light around it. And one day soon, the restrainer who is holding all hell back will be removed. Then the tribulation will begin, and it will be a time of terrifying supernatural events. Scarier than any movie you've seen or nightmare you ever had, each day will get progressively worse. It will be literal hell on earth. It is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page, and I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation, we're under the age of grace, which means right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross. And surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And then it will be the hard way. And you will have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You will have to die for Jesus. 
But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today because one thing is for sure. And the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, and we've seen a lot. Like I said over the past week, so much is going on. We were so close to nuclear war last week, it's not even funny. Who knows how long we'll be able to survive. But the point is that the end is here. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally today, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer. We're not guaranteed that you'll see tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. So if you would like to be saved, in the description box we have a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates and outline of what you can say to be saved. But it is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart, a sincere cry out to God that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. I pray you got something out of this, but never take my word for it, because no one on this earth has the answers you're looking for. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world, they don't have the answers. Only God does. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. They won't scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible. And if you need prayer, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We want to praise Jesus right along with you for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries. Or, God willing, we'll see you in the clouds.